Welcome to the 2025 Budget Tracker Tutorial, the ultimate spreadsheet for setting and staying on track of all of your financial goals. I am super excited about this year's new and improved budget tracker for a lot of different reasons. The biggest addition is all of the new debt repayment insights. After being prompted to fill in more information about your debt on the setup tab, not only will you see a lot of new monthly and annual insights, but I've also added a snowball debt calculator that calculates a debt repayment schedule using the snowball method for the next 30 years. I also combine the savings and sinking fund goal tables for a more streamlined goal tracking experience, added a lot of new fund charts and graphs, added more rows to the goal categories, and much more. When you first open the file, you'll be on the Read Me First tab, which is your go-to guide for getting started. This tab contains instructions on how to download the tracker, important notes, and a detailed breakdown of how to use each tab with screenshots. A few important things to note. When filling out this tracker, only edit the white cells. If a cell is colored, it indicates that it contains a formula or automatically pulls in data from another tab. Second, if you're using Google Sheets, you have to copy the file to your personal drive before you can edit it by opening the file menu and selecting Make a Copy. Once you've made a copy, you are good to move on to the Setup tab. The Setup tab is where you're going to set up your 2025 budget and all of your financial goals. All of the information you enter here will automatically flow into the rest of the budget tracker. First, enter your expected monthly income in the income table, and the monthly income breakdown pie chart will automatically update. Next, enter your monthly expenses and the goal amount you want to spend on each expense in the expense tables. If the expense is a fixed expense that is the same amount every month paid on a particular day, check the fixed checkbox next to the expense. When entering your monthly expense categories, I recommend keeping them on the broader side because you can easily roll up individual transactions into one category using the transaction tracker on the monthly tab. For example, I would enter a subscription expense category in the total goal amount instead of entering Netflix, Spotify, Hulu, etc. Once you've entered all of your monthly expense goals, fill out the new and improved debt table if you have any debt by entering the name of the debt, the current balance of the debt, the minimum monthly payment, and the interest rate. Once you've entered all of your debt information, you'll see the estimated years left until the debt is paid off in the years left column. When entering debts in the debt table, I recommend only entering bad debts such as credit card debt, student loans, car loans, personal loans, and so on, because everything you enter here will automatically flow into the Snowball Debt Calculator tab. If you have any good debt such as a mortgage, I would enter it as an expense category because it's considered a good debt that you aren't trying to pay off as soon as possible. Last but not least, you'll enter all of your savings goals in the new and improved savings table, such as a high yield savings account, wedding fund, emergency fund, 401k, etc. I recommend filling out the savings goals last because the monthly goal overview calculates the amount of income that's left over after all of your expenses and debt payments are paid. For example, here I can see that I have $8,881 left after all of my expenses and debts are paid, which I can now allocate towards all of my savings goals. The amount left to save progress bar is also a visual representation of this and will automatically adjust as you enter savings goals. Once you've entered all of your monthly savings goals, enter the total goal amount for the category in the goal amount column. So for example, if I want to save $10,000 for my emergency fund this year, I would enter $10,000 in column D. Once you've entered your monthly and total savings goal, you'll be able to see the estimated number of months it's going to take for you to achieve that goal in the estimated months column. If you want to achieve the goal faster, you can increase the monthly goal amount, or if you want to spread it out over more months, you can decrease the monthly amount. Lastly, if you don't have a total savings goal for a category, you can leave the goal amount blank, but I would recommend setting a goal for each account so that you can track how close you are to achieving that goal throughout the monthly tabs. Once you've entered your income, expense, debt, and savings goals, you can view your final monthly breakdown on the right of the tab. Now that you've set up your budget tracker, it's time to start tracking in the monthly tabs. You'll enter your income for the month by category in the actual column of the income table, and your monthly savings by category in the actual column of the savings table. Once you've entered your monthly savings, you can view your total goal, the amount you've saved so far this year, 
and the remaining amount to achieve your goal in the savings table and in the goal progress bar chart. Last but not least, enter your monthly transactions in the transaction tracker. A transaction is any expense or debt pay down amount that you are spending money on. Once you enter the date, the amount paid, and select the category for the transaction, it will automatically be added to the category in the expense or debt table. The monthly dashboard in the middle of the tab visualizes your monthly income, expenses, debt, and savings compared to your goals on the top, calculates the average spent and saved per month in the middle, and tracks your transactions entered in the transaction tracker compared to your monthly spending goal so that you can see how close you are to hitting your goal as you enter transactions. Finally, at the top, you can see your total income, total amount spent, total amount left over you had to save, and your monthly save rate. The next tab is my personal favorite, the annual dashboard tab. This tab automatically summarizes all of your monthly data so you can really understand how much money you made this year and where it's all going. The financial overview table summarizes your annual income, savings, expenses, and debts compared to the goals you set in the setup tab, along with the bar chart visualizing your total income versus spending for the year. The monthly financial breakdown table breaks down the same categories by month, and the debt breakdown summarizes the beginning balance, total principal paid, total interest paid, and the ending balance for each of your debts. In the middle of the tab is an annual dashboard that visualizes income versus spending, calculates the most on-track and off-track expense, and visualizes monthly savings by category. The expense breakdown table contains a donut chart that summarizes your total expenses for the year by category and allows you to drill down into specific expenses. For example, if I want to drill down into the amount I spent on groceries this year, I can select groceries from the category dropdown and now I can view my year-to-date breakdown. Finally, the savings goal summary table summarizes progress towards your savings goals by calculating year-to-date savings, amount remaining, the percent complete, and the estimated months remaining for each goal, and also includes progress bars at the bottom. The next tab is the breakdown tab that breaks down your income, savings, expenses, and debt payments by category by month for an even more detailed view of where all your money is going. Last but certainly not least is the new Snowball Debt tab. The Snowball Debt tab calculates an accelerated debt repayment strategy for the debts you entered on the setup tab using the Debt Snowball method. The Debt Snowball method takes an extra snowball monthly amount you want to allocate towards paying off your debts and then uses that amount to pay off your smallest debt first, regardless of interest rates. Your extra snowball amount will be used to pay off the smallest debt until all of your debts are paid off. To view your debt repayment schedule, enter the start date for your debt repayments in cell D6 and the extra snowball amount you want to allocate each month to pay off your debt in cell D10. For example, if you want to allocate an additional $200 each month to paying off your debts, enter $200 here. Lastly, you can enter any monthly snowball amount adjustments you want to make in the add or reduce column of the summary table. For example, if you're getting a bonus of $1,000 in April that you want to put towards paying your debt, enter $1,000 in the add or reduce column for the April 2025 row. Or if you're having a rough month in December and can only put an additional $50 towards debt, enter a negative $150 in the December 2025 row to subtract $150 from your extra snowball amount. Once all of this information is entered, you can view your total debt balance, total interest paid, and a detailed payment schedule for each debt broken down by month.